Hey, welcome, it's Meredith. I am here with a new moon, black moon, partial solar eclipse, tarot reading for us. <laughs> All of this happening in the sign of Taurus. How interesting. So a couple of things to note. Uh, you may wanna do some astrological investigation on your own. So we are having what's being referred to as a black moon. I haven't read about this before. And in this moment, what I know about it is that a black moon is a, is having two new moons in the same month. The information, the intuitive information that has come to me is that because this is also happening on a solar a partial solar eclipse and eclipse energy stays with us anywhere from six to 18 months, we will be seeing, huh, gosh, what's coming? I'm being interrupted by my own intuition. An alternative reality within self relationship, a reflection of our subconscious presence being broadcast visibly into our waking consciousness within our sphere of influence. I know that one's a lot to swallow. So let's see what the cards have to say. The biggest message I've gotten while shuffling the cards is doubling up. I kept intuitively hearing doubling up. We will be seeing things in two different ways, perhaps more. Let's not limit it to two. Though, consider what it is like to look into a mirror and not so much at yourself, more into the environment that you see in the mirror with you. So this is where the alternative reality aspect of the subconscious, <laughs> the subconscious presence being reflected mirrored into our waking consciousness. Oof. Okay, let's get into the cards because I'm not exactly sure where to go with that at the moment, though I can feel that as I say, as I repeat this information to you, some aspect of you is getting it on a very deep, deep level. <laughs> All right, and the cards were very interesting. We're gonna start with the moon aspect. Uh, the cards were interesting in the shuffle. On this side of the reading, they fell out in bunches. So we're gonna go with the first set of three. We received King of Pentacles, nice. The Hierophant and Temperance. Look at the artwork on this card of the King of Pentacles. He's looking over his shoulder. He's looking behind him. A couple of things coming to mind right away. First is he's looking at the cards that are going, going to be revealed here in the solar eclipse aspect of the reading. I also feel that this is a card that's demonstrating some of what I just said about looking into an alternate reality. And from this, gleaning information on how to move, flow, and grow in the oncoming, in the becoming, because this is something that this king is quite focused on. As mentioned many times previously, he celebrates the right here, the right now, understanding that all of the energy that is cultivated in the right here, the right now is an investment in the oncoming. So it's interesting to see him looking back. Uh, this is all about garnering our gains. This is about taking a look at our successes and our perceived challenges within what we might label a failure. So nothing is a failure or a mistake, it's all experience. And how do we use the experience to add to the celebration of now and invest in the oncoming? And I see that this king in a very grounded way, suit of pentacles, earth, uh, is looking back to take the highest and greatest experience thus far, celebrate it now, and invest it going forward. Then we have the Hierophant. 
I almost, oh gosh, I want to reverse these cards or in order. You know, it's like, let me look back. Let me look to my inner divine masculine high priest self to appreciate my own self-education and have an understanding of not only how to temper that temperance, but combine it with the evolution that is unfolding in these moments, our personal evolution and the way we embrace our life and our world. And instead of thinking about how we want to be living on our foundation, engaging the alchemy of the evolution of simply making that happen by being the love that we are and investing that love into the vision of what we are in creation for and with. Ooh, okay, if you're staying with me, <laughs> if you haven't clicked off this one, let's just see what does this bring about for us. So the temperance now flows into the next three cards and we're starting with the six of wands there. So this is victory and this is success. This is homecoming to the self. And look at this temperance card. It's just, it's gorgeous. Again, this is a reflection. <laughs> I understand, I, I'm interrupting myself again. I understand that we are seeing the angel on temperance pour the water between the cups. Though if you alter your vision on this card just a little bit. It almost looks like Temperance is holding its hand up above the eyes to shield, you know, to change the light, to change the view as if, you know, it were too bright and we put our hands above our eyes for shade, right? And it looks like Temperance is looking to the Six of Wands. And the Six of Wands is moving toward the Eight of Swords Oh gosh, look at this. And then the Knight of the Knight of Wands. That's amazing. See, all right, I'm gonna put the cards back in order. <laughs> this is a great demonstration. This is card witching at its finest right here because the intuition is that we are having a great glimpse into the totality of or the collective experience that we have had and and what are we doing with that we have the six of wands a very fiery card we have the knight of wands also exceptionally fiery and it's it's coming in the direction of the eight of swords this is a card where we've tangled ourselves up in our thoughts where at often when we see this card we are looking for rescue how do we get rescued from, you know, the circle of swords, the tied hands, the blindfold. We end up looking outside ourselves. But if you take, take another look here at the cards, we're looking inward. So we are looking to ourselves for the detangling on that eight of swords. And I feel that this new moon, black moon, partial solar eclipse energy, in the sign of Taurus, which is a very strong, forward-moving energy, we're going to get bullish about this with our own selves, meaning that we will be fiery, passionate, and determined to unravel whatever has tied us up and has been a perceived obstacle to living the emotional richness of the love that we are on our foundation. We're setting fire to anything that is a tangle or a potential obstacle. I also feel that we're looking to our prior experience in a really educated way so that we can continue to foster, to grow, to nurture everything in heart space. We've been getting that message on repeat in the daily readings, so check those out too. Next set, two cards. We have <laughs> beautiful, the Ten of Pentacles, yeah, with... The Empress. Oh, we have a 10 down on the table. You know we're going to end up with more 10s. So here's fulfillment in the 10 of Pentacles. This is exactly uh, another demonstration of what's being set up here. The King is looking to the here and the now. 
in the creation of his legacy. So this is our self-mastery in evolution, and we're about to make a new turn in our evolution for a revolution of love, right? And then we have the, the Empress here nurturing this energy. This is divine feminine energy. She is the mother of tarot. She is all four queens rolled into one being here. So we can anticipate new beginnings and fresh starts. We can anticipate... Uh, We can anticipate tremendous bounty in the evolution of our Ten of Pentacles. The next layer of our legacy of love is forming here. It's birthing onto the foundation. Next set of cards, we have four of them. The first of which is Ace of Swords. You know, that's another bit of information that I was reading about for for the eclipse truths come to light <laughs> maybe maybe some things that we've been wondering about some contemplations that we have had become obvious to us in the brilliant clarity of the new moon and the solar eclipse it's everlasting strength it's truth it's authenticity it's a divine and cosmic, excuse me, a divine and cosmic gift of awareness. Hmm. Followed by now the King of Cups, <laughs> the Four of Wands, and the Page of Pentacles. Oh, beautiful energy there. So King of Cups, divine masculine energy, really uh, active, intuitive guidance coming our way, flowing in. In, in connection to our Four of Wands, happiest card in the minor suits of tarot, and this is a super stable energy for us. The Page of Pentacles is embracing the cycle, fresh new cycles. We see that with the Empress as well. Incredible bounty on repeat and fresh new cycles of life experience, evolution, revolution as we invest in ourselves and as we take a look at our Eight of Swords life experiences and get to the truth in the heart of the matter. That is a message that certainly has repeated for us. Let's move over to the solar eclipse, partial solar eclipse aspect of the reading, knowing that this new moon, this second new moon in the month, uh, is going to be quite an influence in the solar eclipse energy. So this is something that will stick with us. These experiences, the energy exposure that we have today, from the cosmos will be stimulating us for the next six to 18 months. And so we can, we can take the highest and greatest out of these cards and apply them to the experiences that are in the oncoming that this King of Pentacles is quite interested in. Hmm. All right. Our first card. <laughs> there we go. There's the sun. Oh my gosh. How amazing is that? So, the sun illuminates the subconscious. Yeah. So being able to see with brilliant clarity, Ace of Swords, into the subconscious as we are simultaneously experiencing the evolution of our waking consciousness. Here we come again with that message of Gazing into the mirror, doubling up, seeing more than one reality at a time here. And the sun is providing us with the clarity necessary to do that. What's coming of it, though? <laughs> oh, here we go. Here's another 10. As I mentioned, you see one, we'll see another. It just seems to happen for us. So there's the Ace of Cups to the power of 10, bringing love, bliss, joy, and happiness on overflow to us. That's a great connection to the Empress over here. A great connection to the Ten of Coins and the King of Coins. Wow. This is a result of the energetic, the loving energetic investment we make in ourselves and our Four of Wands foundation. Having the, where is it now? Six of Wands in the reading is an ever-evolving celebration of success and victory within self-relationship. And we got it going on here. 
we are living, I feel, peaceably with our Eight of Swords life experiences where we have been tangled up, perhaps confused and not so clear. But look at all the clarity we're receiving in the reading to address whatever our Eight of Swords perceived obstacles were and potentially are in these moments. And as we bring our passionate, creative, enthusiastic fire to it, we are able to make the kind of change required to support a Ten of Cups, Ten of Coins foundation. Living in harmonized divine masculine, divine feminine within self. Oh, oh my gosh, look at this. Then we have Temperance again and the Seven of Coins. This is more bounty. This is more harvest in the seven of coins. This card has been showing up quite a bit for us lately. So there's a lot on offer to us. You can see it here in the Empress. She is the promise of so much more. So there is a harvest coming in with great reciprocity for us. You know, there's abundance. And then we give back to the abundance. And the abundance gives back to us beautiful. That's our 10 of cups. That's our 10 of coins coming to life on the four of wands. Then, you know, temperance here, this pouring of the water between the cups. This is a doubled up energy for me. And temperance has shown up twice in the reading, doubled up energy. So I really do feel that we are moving beautifully between consciousness and subconsciousness. The light is shining into our subconscious and we are bringing our attention to to what is there to make the the very best of it to make more of what is there all that serves and all that does not serve and what does not serve is something eight of swords we're going to shift frequency with hmm. then we have the nine of wands and shifting frequency with some of the more challenging aspects of life experience can be a test of our endurance. Though the cards here are showing us that we have more than enough endurance to take a look at the Eight of Swords, to take a look at the Three of Swords, which we were seeing in the daily readings for a while. Next we have, look at that, confirmed right there with yet another nine, and it's the Nine of Coins. So this is self-sovereignty. This is uh, the Minor Ar Arcana version of the Empress here more doubled up energy for us. So I'm feeling as above divine feminine, so below waking consciousness and how we how we broadcast our energy. This is a card of plenty. This is a card of celebrating the harvest that we see as promise on the vine in the seven. We know how to spare and share. We know how to give and receive off this card. So there's a lot of harmony here. Next we have <laughs> the strength card. Yes, how fantastic is that for us? Because we have the strength to go the distance with any perception of challenge or obstacle on our life journey in the making of our 10 of coins, 10 of cups, four of wands, sun lifestyle. And, you know, the, the strength card is living in the vulnerable yet courageous love of our own being. Not taming that energy, allowing that to free flow. Another message that we've received on repeat lately. Not to tame ourselves, not to water ourselves down. See, you can see it in the Knight of Wands over here. You can certainly see it in the Six of Wands, absolutely in the Strength card, and even in the Nine of Wands with the sun shining right on it. We're drawing on the depth of our strength, and we're feeling a tremendous amount of vitality, and that is setting us free. It's not something to be held back. Our last card here, <laughs> another 10. There's the Wheel of Fortune. Beautiful. This is alignment with our destiny. This is the divine delivery system at work, bringing all of this into brilliant clarity for us in the sun, the Ten of Cups. 
the Eight of Swords, the Empress even, the Four of Wands. We're seeing the subconscious in this brilliant light, in this brilliant illumination. And that allows us to set ourselves free Eight of Swords and live in freedom and success within. So there's a lot of beautiful energy here within the partial solar eclipse and the new moon, black moon in Taurus. And this is, this energy has a lot of vitality to it. And it's going to be with us for at the very least six months and perhaps much longer. So keep in mind, we have a Mercury retrograde coming up. I think that's on May 10th. We have another eclipse coming up also, I believe, in May. So we'll be checking into those energies and how they're serving us and how we can navigate those energies in harmony with this message here. This is one of the readings that you might want to bookmark and revisit in a month or in two months, maybe once a month for a while. So you can witness your own progression through these energies and see how the harvest is coming in for you and how you are in reciprocity, how you are in brilliant clarity, how you're building on the legacy of the Ten of Coins while simultaneously living the bliss, joy, and happiness of the Ten of Cups in this divine alignment off the Wheel of Fortune. Hmm. See how the Tens are talking to us? <laughs> the Tens are fulfillment cycles too, which ties, which really tie well to the Empress. All right, have a beautiful new moon, black moon, and a partial solar eclipse. Leave some comments, share with us, tell us what's going on in your experience and how you're navigating it. Thank you for being here. Peace, love, joy, blessings. Namaste.